Now we are uh, coming to the last questions for the third round. So I, I would like to uh, go more deeply about the key success factors. Yeah. So the what is uh, what are the key success factors in carrying out the digital transformation? given the resistance that often occurs and also the very fast development of technology. There are always gap of technology, the rapid change of technology. So what governance platform should be the government adopt, especially in Indonesia, yeah? uh, maybe learning from uh, Korea and also from Estonia. So this is the questions. What are the, uh, the key success factors? given the resistance that often occurs and also the very fast development of technology. Should we have a government platform yeah, to be adopted in Indonesia? So, Professor Nam, do you want to start? So I would like to go, go more in deep, uh, deeply about your uh, explanation before, yeah. Okay. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Korea has many challenges uh, and we have some uh, trigger factors to tackle those challenges. For example, uh, as I said earlier, our Biggest challenge is, I think, digital literacy gap, the gap in digital literacy, uh, not only for the society, full society, but also within the public sector, within the civil, uh, civil servants, civil service, surely. So uh, the issue is the Ministry of Personnel Management in Korea. Uh, that is one of the ministry uh, organization agency. And their mission is, uh, one of the, their mission is um, the, the upgrading the full level of digital capacity, digital literacy, and for uh, the, in the full uh, society of civil service. That's the one way. And the second thing is, uh, second challenge is, um, the low and left behind approach. So it, especially within the Korean government, uh, I don't know the Indonesia or Estonian government, uh, the people, how those people are uh, recruited. In Korea, uh, equity and the fairness is a very important public value. So the base system is examination, national examination. So the 1 million or 1.5 million are in the public sector workers, the number of public sector workers in Korea. And almost all of them are actually, they passed examination. So they think after the examination, once they enter the civil service system, they think we are uh, privileged or we are special people for serve for the country. But in the national, uh, the citizen's eye, in my eye, actually, that's not true, actually. So some people have, have a high level of capacity, other people do not. So the problem is uh, low level of capacity. Who have low level of capacity? Well, another question is why they started the same, same, same position, they started the same position, why one year after, or two years later, or 10 years later, why do they have difference in the ability, especially in ability of digital transformation? So that's the kind of very important point to uh, tackle in by the, uh, the Ministry of Personnel Management. So no one left behind, not in the full country, but also in the Korean government, that is very important, uh, strong directive in the public sector. And one more thing I need to put an emphasis is kind of social learning and social consensus. So Korea is now, we can say democratic society. 
But what kind of democracy is very important? So we have too many voices and too many noises too. So too many voices means, does not mean always really efficient democracy. So I think we can uh, pursue effective democracy, but not really efficient democracy. So very longer and delayed decision. So there are so many that kind of uh, very, uh, uh, really not fast decision point, but digital transformation, we expect digital transformation make those uh, enhanced uh, capacity, enhanced uh, decision processes is more uh, rapidly happening. We expect that with the digital transformation, with the digital platform for digital democracy or e-participation is more efficient and effective. So, but the problem is social consensus. What kind of agenda is now built? What kind of agenda is raised? It depends on actually. Now it's Korea, now it's election season, present election season. So two camps, uh, uh, the opposition party and the ruling party, two candidates, they have their own vision of this transformation. Almost the same. But I think once after they get the, the country, the regime, actually their actions will be different. The so one is the uh, left party, actually. The other party is right party, conservatism and the pro progressive, pro progressive party. Actually, their usage of the digital transformation as a tool will be very different, I think. So for that, Korea have not the social consensus, actually. We have a divergence. 50% mm -hmm. of the people agree this kind of usage of digital transformation for democracy. The other people believe digital transformation is a strong tool for efficiency, economic efficiency, industrial benefits. So industrial side or democratic side. So think about the United States three years ago, Donald Trump and Joe Biden. So that kind of the camp party conflict is almost the same in Korea now, actually. So digital transformation open very different Pandora box, actually. So that's what Korea now happened. But we will figure out actually, and we will have some uh, the answer for the near future, I think. But social consensus, there is no more actually with this transformation. This transformation opens very complicated situation now. So because for example, labor union uh, or the platform workers, think about the Indonesia, Gojek and Grab. So in Korea, almost the same situation they have very they have struggled their everyday ordinary labor situation but in korea that kind of platform corporates are dominated by actually the big corporates such as samsung or that kind of very big companies but you know the government they have some difficulty to support we are who's for who support actually for example government can support only labor union or the big corporates. So that kind of the, the kind of, how can I say, bipartisan decision situation is now happening in Korea with the digital transformation than before. So that is now very much a struggle point and impact, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, our important factor uh, for to make the digital transformation in Korea successful is I think digital literacy Mm -hmm. and the no one left behind, that kind of strategy, and also social consensus, I think. So that is, I think, a very important factor to Korean success in the digital transformation. So what, what is your proposal for Indonesia? Is top-down approach fit for Indonesia? Le yeah. Learning from Korea experience? Uh, Korea, I think, just evaded uh, the developing country, I think. We just cut in the developed country, the cool group, but we are still struggling in the economy and social conflict, so many things. But Korean's approach was successful mm. because of human capital in the public sector. So always, this is almost the same. Japan, China, Taiwan is almost the same. I think East Asian people have almost the same culture because human first, which is the leadership and the right people makes the right decision. 
and the right dis digital transformation. So human capital. So that's why I put an emphasis on no one left behind. All people should be smarter okay. in the digital transformation. Because digital literacy is very important. And also, if we think government is a leader of society, government people should be smarter than other people. Okay. This here and uh, not here, Korea is not in the United States. Different. United States maybe the corporate leaders can lead the whole society, but Korea is government leaders lead the whole society for almost 5,000 years. So still corporate leaders are important actors, government partners, definitely, but not fundamental final decision maker. The fundamental final decision maker always government in Korea. That's why government people should be smarter and more reliable. That's my point. Okay. Thank you very much, Professor Nam. Professor Drexels, you have. Uh, you yes. Have, um, okay. Let me, uh, uh, indeed, let me make two points and follow right away up to Professor Nam right there. Um, and uh, to, to what you said in the end and what you said before. In the end, I completely agree with, but um, it always depends where in the technology waves you are. Mm. And I'm a Schumpeterian, so I believe in these big waves. Um, uh, I do not think 2022 is a year in which I need to say, oh, let's be technology and startup driven and bureaucracy is a barrier. By now, the public sector has been so delegitimized that we need to remember. And here I would like to say that digital transformation is yet another iteration of a techno-economic paradigm shift of which we have seen several since the enlightenment. And um, I would here really echo my boss in London, Mariana Mazzucato, that the public sector has driven and pushed innovation um, at least as much, probably more than being a roadblock. The question is only how do I get the public sector to push innovation, and I mean now not innovation in the public sector, but innovation in the private sector. How can this framed and developed by the public sector? And that for me is the big PA question. And it's a little bit outside of e-governance because it's a larger issue. Mm -hmm. And here I would actually, I, I found really fascinating what Professor Nam said in the end, because I think that the most capable and competent systems to do so in bureaucracy are not the Western systems that did that fairly well for 200 years and then not so much anymore, but are the systems that in comparative PA, uh, we call Confucian, the classic Confucian systems of which Korea is of course an autonomous one that is similar to, but not a little sister, but a real other system than the Chinese one. And the reason here is, it's absolutely correct that there is a tendency for finishing the exam, getting the job, and then settling down and relaxing. But that's an aberration. That is not how the system was meant. The classic Confucian systems have extremely strong overall large-scale performance indicators. And if you don't do your job, and if you don't do digital transformation in your area, if you don't do your job, then you are severely punished more than in any other system. Uh, in the Chinese system, up to the head off. That wasn't so bad for the Yang Ban in Korea, but it's still an important legacy. With the high privilege of civil service also come very high demands. And there is no excuse for a strong civil service not to push this in the interest of the country and fueled by the privileges that you have. So this is how I would put this. And, and, and indeed, I would actually hear once again, um, uh, expect leadership from these East Asian countries uh, for, for the rest to look at. Um, platforms. So uh, the issue with the platform is contextual, but you know, we had a discussion at the Davis Center at Harvard in uh, five weeks ago, before the events in Kazakhstan, because Kazakhstan has uh, purchased its e-governance platform from a Russian bank. Mm. Uh, that means they, they really did purchase a large scale platform because they said, this is the drive of the time, we now need to do that and so on. And they purchased that from a bank called Sparebank, which is one of the big Russian banks. This is not a government bank, but, um, 
all big financial institutions in Russia are linked to the government. And that's not only the case, by the way, in Russia, but also to a very, very large East Asian country that is in the business of selling platforms and the like to the rest of the world. Professor Eko, I remember well your lecture on the Digital Silk Road and the Belt and Road Initiative in Doha two years ago. Um, uh, what I mean with this here is um, platforms and government platforms are essential infrastructures of sovereignty and power. Mm. If you give these away, if you easily let in other people's platforms by thinking this is just technological or it's efficient now or it speeds up the process, that's precisely not enough. And this is where I see the NGOs and the public sector to stop because the business world will always say we need something cool and efficient right now. And it's important that they do their pushing, but this is where you also need to see what happens. Also, by the way, you might know that if you choose a large platform, the costs are not in the creation, but in the maintenance. 70% of the costs will be the further update and so on and so on. I mean, we don't know how long it goes. But what is important here is that um, the choice of large platforms is not a technology matter and it's not an economy matter, it's a political matter. There is new neutrality in this. And I should say this also here, I do not think big American companies that offer such platforms are problem free, definitely not. They come with their own strings attached and their own idea. Um, you have a small new country in Asia, very close to you, East Timor, where there was actually an issue of a Western company coming in and basically taking over the government by supplying platforms. Um, and I think the key words that we have here is not only digital sovereignty, but also the now very hip phrase data colonialism. So you need to really, really watch it. I would say that all together, although this is a tall order, whatever you can domestically do, whatever you can insource, however you can do that, the better. In addition, the more you produce things at home, think about the huge potential of the IT sector and of young people in going into IT in Indonesia. Look at the great startup scene. Um, look at the, uh, the smart cities, for instance, Bandung. Look at the, the startuppers in, in Jakarta where you're now, right? So that the Temasek Corporation in Singapore invests in Jakarta because you have a better digital startup world than in Singapore, you know? Uh, so the Singaporeans bring their money to Jakarta. There is a reason for that. Um, this world also wants to be fostered and nurtured and educated. Again, taking up this thing of bridging the digital divide that Professor Nam mentioned. Um, so that those people who are truly interested, and I think the basic literacy and competence is no question there in Indonesia, and to a, um, uh, to a meaningful degree, this is now a nice thing of size that Indonesia can develop critical mass rather quickly because there is a lot of smart people. Yeah, that is important. The human resources are big. Um, that this is something wherever I can that I want to produce the ecosystem and the platform system as much domestically. And if not, then with as much domestic involvement and domestic capacity to judge and write the terms of reference as I possibly can, even if this slows down a little bit. It can't slow down too much, I agree with that, because we need to stay mm. with it. But if it slows down a little bit, for me personally, this is a price worth paying because I think that there is uh, no fruitful way around domestic digital capacities. Yeah. This, this is a really crucial thing to develop. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Drexels. Yeah, you mentioned about uh, data colonialism, domestic capacity, domestic involvement. It is very uh, important. Yeah, I think for development of uh, digital transformations. Although in practice we are facing the political interest too, <laughs> and also private interest. 
Thank you very much. Now I'm moving to uh, uh, Pak Cahyono. What do you need to accelerate transformation, uh, digital transformation in Indonesia, Pak Cahyono, based on your experience now? Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Rebecca. Maybe there is a uh, three point how to accelerate the digital transformation in Indonesia. First is how to reduce the digital divide. I agree with Professor Nam, which is the, not only about the digital infrastructure divided, but also on the digital literacy in uh, between the central agency and the local government, and also in the west area or on the east area in Indonesia. And the second one is about the how to implement the integrated e-government. So this is the, maybe the, uh, typically in Asia, which is the government is become the leading sector into digital transformation and to how to enable and to become the catalyst to digital transformation in national. So the, the role point is uh, e-government, digital government. And the third one is how to improve the human capital in public sector. So this is the, the most key the, is how to improve the, to build the innovate, innovation in public sector, which is the, all the uh, civil servants become the, uh, become the, have the capability to, to innovate the public service. I think that's the three uh, key points that, uh, my, my experience is to improve the digital transformation in Indonesia. Thank you very much. Pak Chayono was a former man behind the IT development and transformation digital in the Ministry of Finance, Professor Drexels. So that's Thank why you. he moved from Ministry of Finance to Ministry of Master Reform to expand, to accelerate the transformation digital. Yeah. Yes. Uh, for our nation. Thank so, you. Thank, thank you, Pak Jayono. Pak, Pak Prof. Agus? Okay, thank you. So the question is, what is the challenge in promoting digital transformation? Yeah, talking about digital transformation process in the bureaucracy, we can see the, ch the challenges we are facing. Uh, first, on the one hand, uh, there are many government employees who think about technology-based innovation, such as building e-government and smart cities. But on the other hand, there are still many employees who must be motivated to work discipline from 8 a.m. to 4 a.m. Attend to serve from Monday to Friday, serve citizens in a friendly and fast manner and not take advantage of position for personal gain. So we can see that there are still uh, lacking regions that must be encouraged so that uh, their employees come to work regularly to serve. For example, there are still schools that teachers never sit, uh, visit. There are students who have graduated from high school but cannot read and write. There are still health centers without nurses and doctors. So yes, we have a digital divide and at the same time, a culture divide and also a service divide. So what can, what can we say to this level of bureaucracy? If we go around Indonesia, we still find service offices that have no staff, or offices that are only open once a week, or government employees who are only uh, present and on certain days. Once again, in some areas, the service quality mentality, uh, service culture of the employees must be strengthened uh, before we talk about digital transformation. It should be remembered that uh, digital transformation is an instrument to improve uh, public services. However, until the service mentality is strengthened, digital transformation will not mean much. And improving service mentality or service culture is much harder than improving uh, service technology. 
Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Agus. Thank you.